Hello, Campbell. I'm so excited to talk to you. All right. Glad just pleasure to talk to you today. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Fab. So I'm wondering when did National Geographic approach you about this project and what made you want to do it? I would say it was maybe a year. I'm going to say it was definitely, I'm, I don't know if it was a full year, but it was the year before. And Elena, Gabby and Pagan reached out to me. And I'm an IRL person, even though I was born in a digital age. So when I sat down with them both, I expressed my concerns for just, you know, I've never been um, in a spotlight like in this manner. But Pagan and Elena really made me feel comfortable. And Pagan really guided me in saying the story they want to tell and how authentic. And they were just so honest about it. And throughout the whole process, there was such, they treat me with such care. And I was like, if I'm going to do something, it, might, it would be great to do something in this, um, in this line, in this vein. Um, but yeah, their care and attentiveness to just creating a beautiful story is one of the main reasons why I said yes. And I mean, I feel like it turned out so vulnerable and honest and interesting. So thank you for doing it. Mm, thank you. <laughs> so Increase the Blacks is a notation you make yes. on your photo retouching. And as you say in the episode, it can take on so many different meanings mm -hmm. and it could be taken in different ways. If you had to choose just one definition right now, what would it be? Increase the number of blackness, if that's even the right way to say it, that appears in our industries. Okay. Um, I've actually take out the word blackness, just increase the visibility of minorities in our industries. Great. You talk about James Barnor and his photography, and it made you realize we need to take a more critical look at the images we're digesting. Can you talk about that? Yeah, because um, coming across James's work and meeting him made me realize my own unconscious bias about my own homeland. I'd been taught about Ghana being third world country, poverty, colonialism, all of those things. And especially just from my own upbringing, from my grandparents who traveled and moved to the UK. So seeing someone who predates my grandmother's time, seeing the work on how glamorous and how beautiful made me realize the gaze and the eye of the photographer is very important because if James decided to feed into the notion of what the nation of Ghana could be or was, then maybe I wouldn't be so confident in my own ethnicity and upbringing. So for myself, I maybe you think, I'm going to be James one day, I'm going to be older and I'm going to have a catalogue and I'm going to have a generation, a generation after that looking at my work. So I want them too to be inspired and feel confident in where they're from regard you know whether it's fashion whether it's art whether it's from london i want people to have the same epiphany of you know you know just a love for where they've come from that james was able to bestow onto me with his work that's great so as an artist you say you want to be vulnerable and take yourself seriously creatively tell mm. me more about that yeah i think my Introduction into the industry was by chance, if I'm being honest. I created my magazine, Knee Journal, and my agency just because I was solving a problem. But I hadn't really thought about myself in my work as being part of the work. Everything was very, you know, um, how do I say this? Everything was very much away from me, like the image, the product, whatever I was doing. And then it just, I think it comes to, it comes a time every artist's life they have, you know, get the mirror to themselves. And like, what am I doing? What am I actually here for? And all the amazing artists that I love, whether it's musicians, writers, you know, painters, filmmakers, they do that. They sit with themselves and they think what urgency they have deep within myself that I need to explore and that I need to regurgitate onto my chosen medium. And I think it was that time for me. And I was like, I want to be more vulnerable because you know, like artists like Tracy Emin reading her book, Strange Land, or listening to interviews of Toni Morrison, or listening to 
Nina Simone sing Mississippi, Goddamn, and the context of that, those were the things that inspired me to pick up my pen, pick up my camera. So if I'm going to, you know, take their place in a creative world, I should also think and be as vulnerable as they are, because that's how we move mountains and we change minds. Right. So your agent slash best friend, Sam Ross, yeah. says no young photographer has done more to reshape their industry and promote representation. What do you want your legacy to be as an artist and as a person? I think as an artist, my legacy should always be that I'm trying to educate and not irritate people. I think when minorities speak on things, whether it's about female rights or LGBTQ or whatever it be, the you know majority always feels like you're throwing it down our throats and you're trying to tell us, but with my work, it isn't about that. I do things with love and sensitivity. So I want my legacy to be that I try to change minds, including my own. You know, I'm a growing being and I want people to understand that I fought for things and that I didn't just accept things. And I hope my work is gonna show that one day. And for me as a person, I hope my legacy was that I tried. I think that's it. I just wanna know people will see as well, he tried because no one can knock me for trying. So yeah. Great. I wanna talk about your family just a little bit because we meet your brother, Leslie, we meet your mom, we meet your sister. And I feel like you are giving us such an interesting insight into your world, how it was growing up, you know, how you were in foster care for a little bit, how you've kind of come into yourself. Why was it so important for us as the viewer to see that struggle from you? I think it's important because we all live in our own little micro worlds and the older I get, the more I do, like you're meeting me here in 2024, but this this vessel has a lot of miles on it, it has a lot of history. And I think I just, not that I stopped, the, the people in my life became less aware of what was going on. So I think it's important for people to see that, to understand how I came to be here. I think it's important for people who may have similar stories to understand that I've got here despite, in spite of all those things. And just for people to understand that we're all human still. I think the work I inhabit in the industry I inhabit can be so glamorous sometimes that people forget there's a human behind the work. And that human has its own timeline and histories that got them to this point. And I just want I just want the younger me's, the younger people that relate to me to go like, life is hard, period. But that doesn't mean we can we have to accept that that's gonna be our life forever. One thing you say that I found super interesting, and I'm not sure I thought about it before you vocalized it, mm -hmm. is that you don't know many photographers who are Jehovah's Witnesses, and that's really influenced your work. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, because anyone who's been a Jehovah's Witness will say how indoctrinating it is. Like I speak on it in a documentary that I didn't have a moral compass. Like where most children are taught, if something's wrong, figure it out. Why is it wrong? I just had the Bible. So I never had to train my mind to go, okay, this is wrong. What do I do? I just looked to the scriptures and they would tell me what to do. And it's kind of weaved into my work throughout the moment I picked up a pen or a camera because I see the world a very different way. And I've been blessed to meet a couple of extra witnesses during my um, career, like Mobilaji at GQ and Kelsey Liu, the singer. And there's words I can't, I can't put into words what it means to have gone through being a Jehovah's Witness and to leave. But when I meet someone, there's this, oh, I see, I get it. I get why you do things like that. And the more I've met them, I was like, okay, I need to make sure that's out there because the loneliness I felt for so long, because of it, I don't want others to feel that way. Mm. Uh, I want others, you know, and also as a photographer, I create imagery. And as a Jehovah's Witness kid, I was very mad at the imagery I was seeing. I didn't have the words for it, but it just didn't make sense to me. I was like, I don't get that. I was very critical. I was like, this doesn't make sense. 
So if I'm going to go through that experience, now be an artist that the world is watching, I need to rewrite those you know, rewrite those roles that I felt when I was a young boy when it came to iconography and religion. Hmm. I can appreciate that you talk about loneliness and I really appreciate that you talk about your mental health. Um, and we see you kind of working through it or at least explaining it to us as the audience while you're painting that photo. Can you talk about a little bit of kind of how you got into that headspace and once you were committed, you know, what helped you get better? Um, into the headspace of creating the work? Yeah. Um, I would say years of therapy, because since 2017, I've been in and out of therapy and during the time of the exhibition, I was really, really religious and disciplined in my therapy so I was able to go into my past and it not to shock me you know I was able to be curious not scared and that allowed me to sit and ask myself questions how do I feel about what happened why haven't I spoken about it as much um why haven't I created work about it because all aspects of my life I've created work but this is something I seem to run from and I think I was at a time where I had a great support system around me for the first time in a while, mm. both within myself and outside. And that allowed me to, you know, be okay in creating the work. Even during it, if I'm going to be honest, I just listened to the gods in music for me. Like during the documentary, I have an earpiece in and I'm listening to Azealia Banks' Wings of a Butterfly. And it's funny because maybe not the words, but because you have this female black Harlem born rapper creating like punk metal music with people from Russia unapologetically. And this is black music. So for me, it was like all the oddities and the weirdness and the quirkiness that I inhabit. If I can create a song like that, where it's unapologetically black without being a trope, then I'm winning. So I wanted to make sure I had that energy when creating the paintings because there's so many ways I could have visualized psychosis and mental health within blackness and black men. And I didn't want to fall down the rabbit hole, or fall into the trap of making it an obvious take on it. It had to be my take. It had to be, you know, like Zelo Banks's take on punk music. I hope it's punk music or rock music. Okay. It's more metal music, yeah. Okay. So with Knee Journal, you know, you did such an amazing job of showing Black bodies in a different way. I love how you talk about why you thought it was important for you to start that journal. And it seems like it really resonated with so many people. But you also talk about the fact that, you know, you were accidentally CC'd on something where someone didn't think you were necessarily the right person to take pictures of, I think it was a white person. Mm. Can you talk about why they're wrong and like, you know, why you're the right person to take anybody's picture or produce any kind of art? I would say they're wrong because it's just factually incorrect. It's something I've had to, whenever I debate any topics, I remind myself to leave my feelings out of it and lead with my facts because you can't dispute a fact. And if they had said the idea we're trying to shoot is an aesthetic clean camera as well, then that's different. I can see that. Um, what was the latter part of the question? I forgot, sorry. So I'm just wondering, um, you know, why you would be right to shoot anything you want or make any kind of art that you want. Because I, because I'm an artist. First, when I picked up the camera to document things for Knee Journal, it wasn't, like I say, it wasn't just for Black people, but it's all I know. I look in the mirror every day and I see Blackness. You know, when I'm, you know, anything I do is Blackness, whether the body in the frame is and a Black person, it's still Blackness. But I think at the time, there wasn't really a group of young photographers or photographers creating imagery in the fashion space. So 
people were shocked. People didn't know how to digest it. With anything that people don't understand, they fear it. And I think when people think about any minority creating something or being part of anything, regardless of the in the industries they inhabit, they're still human. And humans have created amazing, beautiful things, but only a certain type of human or a certain part of the world has been able to dominate that space. So in answer to your question, the reason why I could shoot anything is because I'm human first. And I use my talent to make sure that humanity is seen and to feel seen. So to diminish it to a trope such as gender or race or sexuality, it's kind of doing the human race a disservice because when Thomas Edison created what well, electricity and a light bulb, he wasn't thinking about men using it, he was thinking about people. So I think we should apply that same notion to all people and not just diminish them to the things we see. Because if you don't see me when I take a photo, is the photo still black? You know, it's those kind of questions I think people need to ask themselves before they, you know, if a woman takes a photo of a man, is it a woman's photo? Or is it still a great photo? And I think a lot of people just like to go, I don't understand this, I'm going to say that, as opposed to, let's be curious. Because right. if it was a discussion, I would have loved that discussion. Hey, we're not sure you can kind of do this. And I would have been like, cool, why not? You know, I'm all for discussion, whether it's for or against who I am. Okay. That's so well said. So my final question is, um, is there anything you're working on now that you can tell us about and or um, is there something you really want to do in the future that you're working towards? Yes. So I'm currently working on the fourth issue of New Journal. I'm bringing it back. I think it's time. I think there's a huge gap in the market for what New Journal stands for. And I'm really going back into, you know, the vault of what made Campbell want to take photos in the beginning. Mm. But now I'm doing it with a platform. Now I'm doing it with a lot more maturity. Because when I started Knee Journal, I was 22. I'm now, I'm turning 31 this week or next week. So, you know, it's a, there's, there's a lot of growth there. So that's something I'm very excited about. And then future... I would love to do short films. I'd love to do more narrative film. I think the stories that I've been telling so far have been amazing, but now I want to, I want to be more intricate and more detailed in telling stories. Because there's still people that inhabit that inhabit within this vessel that don't really get to, you know, come out. A picture is one twenty fifth of a second. What could I do with ten minutes? You know. So that's kind of where. And I'm working towards it. I've written some scripts. I've written some treatments and some ideas. And just I'm, and I know I now know what part of the moving image real estate I can inhabit. So I think it might be coming in the next year or two. I hope. <laughs>